Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you for the last section here in Chapter 6, 6.6, .6, using proportionality theorems. And in fact, I believe there's three proportionality theorems and one converse that we'll go through in this section. So, first thing we're going to do is take a look at our first triangle proportionality theorem, which says if TU is parallel to QS, then we've got this proportion here that results RT over TQ equals RU over US. Now, what I like to do, and this is just me, I like to actually rewrite this because if you see where RT is located and TQ, both of those are on the top piece of our triangle here, and then so the RU and the US are both located on the bottom. For me, visually, it's easier if I kind of take a look at it from this perspective, this piece on top, QT, is right above the SU part. And then the other piece I like to use is then TR and RU or UR. Either one of those are, are okay. So basically what this proportion allows us to do, because there are different ways we can write our proportion, I like to take the, that and rewrite that as um, QT over... SU and that's going to be equal to TR or RT either way you want to write that over RU or UR. So I like to kind of write it like that instead of the way most textbooks write it. So either way it's okay because we can do that. That's one of the laws of proportions, one of the rules for proportions. We can rewrite a proportion that they give us several other ways and this is one of those ways. Now, not only is this true, but also the converse is true. So, we call that the converse of the triangle proportionality theorem. So, in this case, we're told that, hey, our condition is we've got this proportion, RT over TQ equaling RU over US. If that proportion holds true, then I can tell that my two lines, TU and QS, those two line segments are going to be parallel. So we're going to go ahead and get into this and kind of play around with this a little bit. So go ahead and get your highlighters out because you're definitely going to need to use that here. That's going to really help you kind of keep things organized and straight here. Now as we look at example number one, it says in our diagram QS and UT are parallel. RS is 4, ST is 6, and QU is 9. What's the length of RQ? So we've got to find this piece QR. So what I'm going to do first is go ahead and just, just highlight. So I'll, that way I kind of get everything organized. And that. So go ahead and highlight yours right along with me. You're going to need two colors here. And this is the way that we're going to go ahead and highlight that. And then once we have that kind of all set, it's really, really, really easy to see how we figure out the length of our Q. First thing we're going to do is use our triangle proportionality theorem. And we're going to write down our segments here. We've got QR or RQ, either way you want to write that, over RS. So those two are going to be equal to the other piece UQ over ST. So that's the very, very first thing that you want to do is go ahead and write down your segments from the triangle proportionality theorem. From this part, I think you guys can pretty much figure this out because it is going to be just substitution and then you may have to cross multiply and divide. So go ahead and take your time, do the substitution hit pause and come back and see if you did at least that step right, if not the entire thing. So there we go. We have our first part of our equation, QR over 4 equals 9 over 6. So when you notice that there's a 4 on the bottom of QR in that denominator, all you're going to do really is multiply both sides by 4. So if you multiply that side by 4 and multiply this side by 4, these 4s here will cancel out and then you'll just be left with QR on the left hand side. And then on the right hand side, 9 times 4. Now remember, this 4 on the right hand side is like 4 over 1. So when you multiply that across, 9 times 4, you'll end up with 36. And then 6 times 1 on the bottom gives you just 6. When you reduce that, you end up with QR equals 6. Now this isn't the only way to do this problem. Some people may have preferred a little bit instead of this step right here, this second or this third step, some people may have preferred to write it like this. When you start out with QR over 4 and then 9 over 6, what some people would like to do is write down 6 times QR equals 9 times 4. You can write it like that so you'll get 6 times QR equals 36 and then when you divide both sides by 6 
because really what you do is divide that by side by 6 and that side by 6. So you can do that mentally. You end up with QR equals 6. So either way you want to do that, you will end up with the same value for QR. Not too hard. Pretty straightforward. Just take your time. Make sure you do your arithmetic carefully. All right, so that's all there is to that piece of it right there. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our second example. Now in this example, I think you guys could probably do this entire piece totally on your own. So what I want you to do is go ahead and write down a proportion, substitute your values, and then lastly, go ahead and solve for the indicated length of YZ. Go ahead and hit pause, do all of those things, then come back and see how you did. While you're writing everything down, again, don't forget to use that highlighter. It helps you really see what's going to go on and which pieces you need to get set up together. So use that highlighter, hit pause, and I'll see you in a few seconds. So how did you do with that? Did you end up with ZY equals 28.63? That's what you should have ended up with. Now, over on the right hand side, I've got a second option that you could have done, a second method where you could have reduced the fraction up front. And the fraction that we're talking about is this 44 over 36. So if you would have reduced that to 11 over 9, because 4 goes into both of those terms, that's your greatest common factor. If you were to reduce that to 11 over 9, you can see that algebraically you would still end up with the same answer of about 28.63. Either technique is fine. Just make sure that you do your calculations correctly, you set your work up, you show all of your steps, and your teacher is going to be loving you. All right, that's it for example number two. And that one was pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. I think you guys probably rocked out on that. So give yourselves a pat on the back. And let's take a look at this next piece right here. Check this out. This is cool. I like to call this more of a ladder theorem, but technically it's not given a name. It just says, hey, if we have three parallel lines intersecting two transversals, then they divide the transversals proportionally. So if we've got our three lines, and again, get out your highlighters because this is going to uh, help you guys make sense of all of this. This piece right here and this piece right here are going to be proportional to these two pieces over here. Now again, this isn't going to be the only way that you can write these. So you could write it several different ways, but I like to write it this way. All right, so I'll have the UW piece over VX. So that part is going to be proportionally the same thing as WY over XZ. So either way, you want to slice that or dice that. I, I like to kind of write it this way. And again, this isn't the only way you could write that proportion down. There's several other ways, and I'll go ahead and write down each one of those for you. So whichever way makes the most sense for you, you go ahead and utilize that way because proportionally, we're all talking about the same pieces. So it's up to you how you want to go ahead and write that down. So here's another way that you could have written that, UW over WY is going to be equal to VX over XZ. So either way you want to write that, totally up to you, but that's all there is to that. So let's go ahead and take a look at, at another theorem here that we've got that goes along with this piece. We've got this other theorem that says, hey, if we've got a ray and it bisects an angle of a triangle, then it's going to divide the opposite side into segments whose lengths are proportional to the two lengths of the other two sides. What? All right, get out your highlighters. Let's make some sense of this. This is all that this piece is really going to say. And again, there's a lot of different ways you could write this. It just kind of makes sense whichever one, whichever way you want to write this. I've got a ray bisecting an angle of a triangle. So I can see that because I can see where angle DCB is congruent to angle ACD because of the way the triangles mark. So that part is in there. So I know that the ray is bisecting the angle of the triangle. So it's going to divide the opposite side into segments. So this opposite side is side AD. So that's going to be broken into two segments. So one segment there and another segment right here. So it's going to divide those into two segments whose lengths are proportional to the lengths of the other two sides. So here's your other two sides. One of them's right there. And you guess that the other side is right down here. So I think you could probably figure out there's a bunch of different ways that you could write this proportion. So go ahead and write down at least two different ways you could write the proportion based on the way our diagram's highlighted. Go ahead and hit pause, write down at least two ways, and then let's see what you got. So how'd you do with that? Did you get both of them? Now your letters might be a little bit different than mine. I have AD and you might have DA. Either way, we're talking about the same segment. So one of your options is AD over AC is going to be equal to DB over CB. 
And then another way you could have written that if you would have broken up the side where the angle bisector goes through, you could have had AD over DB is equal to AC over CB, the two side pieces. So either one of those, and you're good to go. Now let's go ahead and test this out and see what you guys have here in example number three. Check this out. It says in a diagram, we're told that the angles are congruent, angle QPR and angle RPS, and our diagram is actually marked for that, so that's kind of nice. Use a given side lengths to find the length of RS. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and get our highlighter out and mark those pieces so that we see now PR is going to be our angle bisector, so that means this part right here is going to go with this piece right here. Those two parts are going to go together and then I'm going to have from P to S, that whole segment is going to go along with this piece right here. Now wait a second though. I don't have the QR part and I need that but I'm also asked to find the RS part. So if I know from Q to R is what is some missing length but I know how long it is from Q to S, that whole thing is 15 then it only then I'm going to use my powers of deduction to then come up with how long QR is. In fact, if the whole thing is 15, RS is X, then that means QR, well, that's got to be 15 minus X. Shazam! So QR is going to be 15 minus X. So now that I know that, I can go ahead and set up my proportion and solve for all this stuff, man. Easy peasy. So what I want you to do, Go ahead and hit pause after you write down your proportion. Take your time, set up each step, show your algebra like good little math students, and then come on back and see if you got the correct value for x. So how did you do? Did you get everything set up right? PQ over QR equals PS over RS. Then, substituting on step 2, you get 7 over 15 minus x equals 13 over x. Step 3. Now for this part, some people might go ahead and do this one mentally or help with the help of their calculator or whatever and go right to step four but the main thing from step three to step four is that don't forget to distribute the 13 to the other term to the x right because most people do 13 times 15 but then they'll forget to multiply 13 times x so you end up with 7x equals 195 minus 13x adding 13 to both sides you get 20 x equals 195 and then when you divide both sides by 20 you end up with x equals 9.75 now rs is the same thing as x so that has a length of 9.75 and that's all we had to figure out so make sure you read the question because sometimes people will just stop they're like oh i got x i'm done and a lot of standardized tests will try and trick you on this too they'll give you the value of x which most people can find but then sometimes you'll have to put it back in to do something with that. If we had to find QR, then we'd have to go one more step and just do 15 minus 9.75 to find the value of QR. But in this case, didn't have to do that. So we can move on to our next example. I think by now you guys have this down pretty solidly. So what I want you to do is go ahead and try both of these two on your own. And then when you're ready, come on back see how you did i'm sure you're going to get them both right but make sure you take your time and show all of your steps all right don't get lazy and forget one of them now in the diagram on five even though it's not marked i want to, i want you to go ahead and mark that here because i think on this diagram they were assuming something even though that's 90 degrees for all of angle a this piece and this piece it, angle C A D B was bisected. So each one of those pieces I know are going to be 45 degrees. All right, so that wasn't correctly notated in our diagram, so I want you to go ahead and add that part. All right, you'll know a little bit more about solving this a different way in a later chapter when you deal with right triangles. But for now, we'll use our triangle proportionality theorems. All right, so go ahead, hit pause, and come back when you're done and see how you did with examples four and five. So, how did you do? For example number four, pretty straightforward, 16 over 15 equals AB over 18. When you cross multiply, you get 15 times AB equals 18 times 16. When you multiply 18 and 16 together, that gives you the 288. So 15 times AB equals 288, then dividing both sides by 15 yields AB being 19.2. Give yourself a pat on the back because I'm sure you got that one right. Booyah! Now check out number five, and number five is pretty legit. I like this one for a lot of different reasons. Now, setting up the proportion, hopefully you did that step one where you write down all of the segment lengths. Now when you do your substitution in step two, check this out. 
On the left, you've got 4 over 4 square root of 2. And on the right-hand side, you have 4 over AB. Now, one of the things, man, this is a shortcut, and I hope some of you guys check, can recognize this. Check this out. Both the numerators are 4. So you have 4 in the numerator on the left and 4 in the numerator on the right. So that means the denominator's got to be exactly the same thing, too. So if 4 root 2 is what's on the left in the denominator, then bam, 4 root 2 is what's got to be on the right. So AB has a length of 4 square roots of 2. Man, you didn't need to go through and do all that other cross multiplying and divide stuff here because if you recognize 4s are in the numerators on both of these, you can cut right to the end and go, bam, I got AB just like that. So that's all there was to this example. Hopefully you got both of these guys right, man. No big deal. Now that's all there is for this lesson, those five examples. So I'm sure you're going to have several others for your in class for you to go ahead and take a look at. And that's all there was. So thanks for watching today. Hope you guys know these three uh, proportionality theorems. And you'll rock out on this when you go to use these in class. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Peace out.